and different animals. For two, for one, for two, for five, for one, for one, for two, 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 thing I haven't mentioned as yet and is rather, rather important is bilge pumps and I've got a couple of bilge pumps I've just well I've had this one for donkeys it's an old Henderson pump uh, with a double chamber thing lovely pump because it's very easy to he says very easy to take apart and, and clean and you know service if need be marvellous pump I say with two chambers, so that will be going in somewhere. Got all the parts for that one, the manual pump. And for the electric bilge pump, I just purchased this one here. This is a bulkhead mounted bilge pump, um, which I rather like the idea of that. I like the idea of keeping the bilge pump itself up out of the water, not having electrics in the bilge water, keeping the pump up dry. Obviously it has a pipe down into the bilge and out. And I'm very pleased with that. Um, it's got these, comes with various fittings, straight or right angle, and they're quick. Just pop them in there, push that blue thing down, and they're in. So they can be removed quickly. Wrong thing. So they can be removed quickly if need be. Right out they come. So that's very nice. I should be fitting that soon up on the bulkhead in the engine room. Obviously going up through a loop and then back down to a to a through hull with a stop clock on it. Unfortunately this this bilge pump I just showed you is a flow jet and it's come with no blurb. There are no indications on it which way around it flows. An arrow would be nice, you know. Nothing, so Gonna have to do an experiment, see which way round, which one's the in and which one's the out. Why aren't they labelled? I suppose maybe it's possible you just wire it up the other way around and it flows the other way. I think we'll see which way it runs with the conventional wiring.
bottom, my left. Bottom, your right. Bottom, my right. Okay, time then. Hi, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapatia. We are building this basically 32 foot cruising sailboat with which we hope to explore, hope and plan to explore various waters of the world. Um, and we're in the process of, of building. And I thought I'd start this week with something a little bit different. The last few weeks have been a lot about the keel wood. We'll come back to the keel wood later, but I wanted to start somewhere a bit different. So, as you saw, um, bilge pump, electrical bilge pump, electric bilge pumps going in. Got it mounted on the bulkhead in the engine room. Um, I've ordered the through hull for it. Um, it's actually just arrived, but the ball valve hasn't. I want a ball valve on there, even though I'll we'll probably never shut that ball valve. Um, I felt it was wisest to have one on there just in case. So I'm waiting on the ball valve so I can get that through hull in and then get the, the pipe work in there. The electrics are already in the engine room. It's just a case of connecting the bilge pump up there. So that's pretty straightforward. The manual bilge pump will be fitted. I believe I'm going to fit it in the lazarette. I've had a good look around with it, find the best spot. And I think the lazarette will be a good spot for it. Uh, I think the electric bilge pump will be the primary bilge pump and the manual as a, as a kind of backup and be able to open the lazarette hatch and pump if need be. So that's what I'm planning there. Um, and as you saw, also just made the very first hint of a start on the upholstery in here. And I'll tell you a story about that. It's, it's, uh, seems a bit silly in retrospect, but anyhow, since before I started building this boat, I've been saving cushions, mattresses and things for the foam. And uh, because I wanted to keep them dry and essentially mouse free, we kept them in the house. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was four or five of these big things cluttering up the place for years on end. So I brought them out here eventually and started cutting them to size. And uh, I had a couple of cushions that come from an old sofa or settee, which are reasonable quality foam. And they're 10 centimeters thick. And the other cushions I had turned out to be 12 centimeters thick or foam pieces I had, 12 centimeters thick. And I didn't like that. And the 12 centimeter thick stuff also turned out to be really soft and, and the, the settee stuff's a better quality. So then I bought, some good quality upholstery foam, 10 centimeters thick, and I've cut that in now to this one that I'm sat on. It's beautiful. Um, and it's even better than the stuff from the settees. <laughs> so now I've bought enough to do the entire settees in here of the good quality new stuff. And my saving of these cushions for years on end has been essentially a waste of time and space. It's life, I suppose.
Well, of course, the other big thing this week has been to progress with this keel timber. Um, needed a good clean up after all the dribblers of epoxy had set off. So uh, gave it a good sand up with the belt sander and a plane with the old school planer. And then one of the important things was to make sure this tapered section here at the aft end was symmetrical, even both sides. Um, I'd only roughed these wood, pieces of wood out with a skill saw and my skill saw has a bit of play in the bearings. It's not the most accurate beastie. So obviously I cut, you know, a bit generously and then squared some lines across and planed them up to a nice symmetrical shape, flat, even taper, rounded off the aft end and we were ready to think about drilling some keel bolt holes.
spit rod. But the trick with the kill bolts, as I see it, is to, is to clamp a level in position and use that as your guide and just keep, stand back, get a good eye on, on that you're parallel to that level in uh, all directions. And they've come out very well, they've come out almost perfect, in fact they've come out extremely well. One is a little bit out, I've tried to fiddle that a bit. Um, it doesn't matter if you make the hole a bit bigger or a bit oval because in the end of the day when the kill bolts are in position I'll be pouring a load of epoxy down the holes uh, to fill them and seal them properly completely and uh, they'll be filled with wet epoxy so they'll be good and solid. And after a lot of thinking about kill bolts, an awful lot of thinking about kill bolts, I have, um, as you may have seen, I've bought some bronze uh, bar which I'll be threading each end and I've decided now to embed the lower end in the lead I think um, either in a J form or I'll, I'll thread them and put a plate on the bottom of them, uh, bottom of them to, to spread the load you know in the lead and then they'll be coming up as I say fixed in the lead up through the timbers obviously and pouring as I've just said pouring epoxy around them to seal everything completely. I'll put thickened epoxy on the top of the lead so it comes up and it's all completely sealed, waterproof, watertight. Should be good, we hope. The final thing was to spread some filler on, fill up any imperfections or whatever, and where the board joints are, they're, they're, what the corners are broken, as my mate George would call it. So a little bit there needed. So I've filled it and it's ready for a final sand now. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, all that YouTube stuff. <laughs> we'll be back. See you next time. Bye.